Hello, thank you for the invitation. My name is Thomas Höppner. I'm a lawyer, another lawyer, sorry, uh, with the law firm Olswang. It's an international law firm focusing on media and technology. Um, I'm here today because we are representing the German newspaper associations and the German magazine associations in, in their lawsuit or in their complaint against Google before the European Commission. We are also advising them on technical aspects of an ancillary copyright law for press publishers, which basically protects them against search engines and similar aggregators. And we are also involved in the negotiations of the French press publishers with Google in France. What does this all have to do with the subject of today? Well, one main aspect in the conflict, if you like, between search engines and other similar aggregators um, with the press, the online press, is the argument of those search engines that press publishers don't need any protection. Why not? Because there's this Roberts Exclusion Protocol, a technical tool that would basically sufficiently protect them against all sorts of acts and actions by search engines. And there are even some courts that say, if you don't use this Roberts Exclusion Protocol, then basically it's your own fault. And you give kind of an implied license, because if you don't use it, it must mean you agree to the search engines using your contact, content. But before I come back to this technical aspect, let me describe the conflict in a nutshell. This is the original business model of search engines some 10 years ago. Back then, we wouldn't have a big conflict, really. We wouldn't have to discuss this aspect because in the original business model, there was a search engine as a kind of neutral navigator between the internet user, the advertiser, and the publisher. You entered. My advantage today is that every one of you will have used Google, so you will hopefully know what I'm talking about. And so if you enter a search query in Google, you are happy that the search engine, I'm talking about Google because everyone uses this and I think it's easier to associate. The search engine will tell you, look, I think for, for your query, the best publisher's website is such and such. And then the internet user is very happy and clicks through to the website of one of those publishers. So the search engine was a simple navigator, an intermediary between those various parties in the online environment. And the good thing for the publishers was basically internet users could find all their content, maybe even those that wouldn't have found the small website in the first place. So they were happy for this service, if you like, by search engines and made an, if you like, unwritten deal with the search engine saying, you can use part of our content in, and in like as compensation, we get the traffic. Take our content, traffic, simple deal. With that, they lived rather happy for some time, but then the conflict started. Where did, when did it start? Well, search engines decided that is a rather dull business model. I think we should expand a bit. So, and then the expansion started in various aspects. First of all, search engines became web portals, which means I click further and take the advantage of Google, which means they started to basically get their own content, license content or even create own content and put it all on their own website, creating their own web portal with own information. So basically, instead of just navigating, they wanted to provide the answers themselves. They wanted to provide the information themselves. So in all of a sudden, you had the situation that there was not this neutral navigator that just delivered all the traffic to the publisher's website, but you actually had a portal that had the aim of keeping all the users on its own website rather than diverting the users to the source websites. So the aim, the, the business model now is attract the users with a third party content Try to keep them on your own website as long as possible because that's where you have your advertisements and that's where you earn your money. And of course, that's what, when the conflict arose because all of a sudden you have direct competition between those expanded search engines and the publisher's websites. Best example, I think, is Google News. Everyone will have used it. 
Google News has started to license full articles, became more attractive. The size of the snippets expanded. It was all structured in various like journal-like uh, formats, like you had special areas for special subjects, and you can personalize it. You get the answers right away. You don't have to enter a search query. It's basically, it hasn't much to do anymore with simple search. It is giving you the answers directly. It's very similar to a normal website of a press pub publisher. And then the effect of that was that less traffic of the internet users was delivered through to the sources. Rather, the internet users stayed on the search in this website and satisfied its information demands there. That kind of was felt by the press publishers. They felt, oh, why is the traffic declining? We have to do something against it. And instead of focusing on the main aspect, they thought, well, it must have something to do with us. So they started investing a lot of money in search engine optimization. They listened to what the search engines told them, them they were supposed to do, like provide, a, provide us more relevant content, higher quality content, and make it easier accessible for us as a search engine. That increases your chance that we deliver more traffic to you. But the problem with that is that the harder these guys work to deliver all this high quality content to the search engine to get a bit of the rest of the pie that is still delivered through, the more the search engine benefits of it. Because the search engine is going, hey, that's great. You know, we create an artificial competition between the press portals and by ranking them accordingly according to their relevance and the quality of the content. And what do they do? They provide us more content for free so that we rank them higher. And in this competition, you can only lose. It's basically a rat race between the press portals because they deliver more and more content for free to the search engine to be ranked higher, but the search engine is making its own business model with this content by expanding its own content portals. And the question then is, can you feel that in economical, in economic terms? Yes. There were several studies showing that nowadays there's much higher traffic on those aggregator websites than there's actually on the source websites. Like if you look at this sentence of the latest study, a full 44% of visitors to Google News only scan the headlines without accessing newspapers' individual sites. So that means Google has created its own business model. It attracts the user's attention. But those guys that actually have all the costs, the content providers, only get a small share of the attention. And that's when they started to think, well, what can we do about it? And there are several options, and one option relates to technique. Let me go through these various options, but just briefly. First, of course, there was Google saying, look, just use our ro technology, robots.txt or robot meta tags. And by using that, you can basically block us from indexing and using your website. And by that, you are protected. You know, what else do you need? But then if you look closer at that, you will find out that's not really an option because it's like suicide. It's like saying, well, I, I wouldn't have to go online if I don't want to be found. And you know, what's the point? I might as well just stay offline. So we'll have a second look at that later. Then the idea came up, we need legal protection. That is what happened in Germany and France. Basically, the publishers going to the, the parliament and saying, look, we need some protection here. Protect us against search engines, protect our small snippets, make sure that if search engines take our snippets, they need a, require a license. But even that has technical implications because then the search engines say, well, we need some technique to actually find out which website and which content is protected and which is not. You know, the law in Germany and France, as it was uh, proposed, basically means only website content of press publishers is protected, but not of bloggers. And then the search engines came along and said, well, how do I know this website is from a blogger and this website is from a, a, a newspaper? And if there is no technical tool to solve this question, we might as well leave this law. And then the third path would, of course, always be to negotiate. 
but the attempts so far have shown that there is just not the right balance in the ne negotiation power because Google can basically determine its own conditions on those smaller publishers. Let me have a look at the main or the current technology in place. As I said, Google always says because of this Roberts exclusion protocol, all press publishers are protected. But if you have a, sec a closer look, you will find that it doesn't provide the, pr the kind of protection you actually need. You may block Google News, but what Google doesn't mention is if you block Google News, you will also not be found in the News 2 universals in the normal web search. I don't know if everyone is familiar with that, but if you have a normal search in google.com um, you, and you look for some news, you will always get this universal, as Google calls it, a special a section where you have only news-related search results. But if you block Google News, you will not appear there either because use, Google uses the same robot, the same crawler for this universal. Or if you use Google News, you will not, cannot appear in Google Alert. Google Alert is a service where Google sends emails to users that are interested in special subjects. Or if you block snippets, you don't want Google to take your snippets, you won't have instant previews of your website either. Or the other way around, if you want to block instant previews, your snippets won't be shown. More importantly, if you block Google's crawler, you will also not appear in all those other websites that's, that cooperate with Google, that use basically the same index. And there are many websites out there that have affiliation deals with Google. But if you go, block the main Google bot, you will not appear there either. But there is a good chance you, you could actually find a deal with those other websites because they are not as strong and they are more dependent on making a deal with you than Google is. And then, of course, another biggie is that the technology as it stands only allows you to you know, block a whole web page. But today, if you, have, if you look at the normal home page for a press publisher, you will find there are several articles. And you might want to protect some articles against being indexed and displayed, but might agree to other articles being displayed by Google. But that's not possible if you only, if, if your only tool is to uh, stop Google from searching the whole web page. So that is a bit described in more detail here, um, that basically the whole commands that this Roberts exclusion protocol provides are all web page based. So the smallest text you can protect is the whole body of a web page. Then, of course, you cannot communicate any conditions with the Roberts Exclusion Protocol. You cannot communicate any price. or You can communicate a time limit when the search engine is allowed to use your content, but not when this time limit should end. And you cannot differ between, that is also a very important point, you cannot differ between the several services. Aggregators now, as I said, do not just focus on a normal search function. They use this content for several other products. They combine it, com combine it with its own content, and so on and so forth. And all these several uh, uh, products that they create, you would need a, some tool to address them distinctively. It's not possible at the moment. And then, of course, the main reason today why press publishers cannot afford to use the Roberts Exclusion Protocol is that Google itself makes clear if you use it, we will basically consider your web page as, I would say, irrelevant. Because it's pretty clear the algorithm works that, that way that it basically wants to index everything, then it assesses the value of what it has found, and then it determines a, a certain page rank. And you know, according to this page rank, it will rank the web page. But if you block Google from actually having a look at the quality of your content, Google can't do all that. So in the worst case scenario, you have the highest quality content on your web page, but you will never be found in the first position. Why? Because Google can't determine whether you really have high quality content. Why not? Because you have blocked Google with Robert's exclusion protocol. So the technical tool that you would need would have to allow Google to 
still judge, if you like, the quality of your web page and give you a high page rank because Google can determine, yeah, actually there is very good stuff on this web page. It really deserves a high ranking. But still, Google shouldn't be allowed to use all that content you have on your web page. So what are minimum requirements for a rights management system? Of course, first of all, it would have to be recognized by the search engines, and that is something that only through standardization could be guaranteed. We don't want to regulate everything, but there has to be some minimum acceptance. And then we need rights communication for individual works rather than web pages, as I just said, because on many web pages you have different type of works, and for some you want, you need re uh, protection, for others you don't. And then you want to communicate con usage conditions. Allow indexing, but specify a time limit. Specify for which purpose this content can be used only for a normal search like on google.com or also for a news aggregator. You want to differ between th the types of web page that is actually using your content. Is it ad financed or is it fee financed? And of course, you want to make sure that you are not punished by actually using that sort of rights communication. Punished by means of the search engine just saying, well, if you use that system, that tells us you don't like us, so we don't like you either, and we will basically not rank you anymore in our system and telling the whole world your website is worthless. So there are a few issues that would have to be addressed by rights management system, and I think that sums it all up, and I'm happy to discuss later on. Thank you.